Hello, welcome to another Becoming a Modern Man. We are playing Scape Shift, and uh, this time we're opening up against Jeskai Control. Um, so, this is our opening hand. Uh, it's pretty good. Uh, we've got turn one search for tomorrow. Into turn two, explore. We've got Scape Shift in hand as well for the combo. So, uh, pretty happy with this. Let's see, we've got an island. Trying to a stomping ground, which we're going to play here, and we're going to try and explore. But our opponent's got the spell snare as an answer to that, unfortunately. Um, so, uh, no luck there. Well, there's a colonnade. I'm going to search for tomorrow, fetching up a mountain. I'm going to run out the cinder glade. One plays a flooded strand. I run out Valakut. I was uh, trying to avoid playing that too early because. Uh, Potentially our opponent could have a uh, Figgled of Ruin or uh, Ghost Quarters, but now is the time to run it out there. Could play Primeval Titan here. I didn't play Primeval Titan. I was trying to play Grand Cryptic Command, basically, but um, given our opponent's a control deck, I suppose we're not going to have too many opportunities to sort of play around his, uh, his stuff. As it turns out and as the game goes on, it becomes more clear that his deck's more burn focused um, and uh, it's more about lightning bolt, electrolyze, lightning helix and uh, is probably pretty light or uh, perhaps doesn't even have any counter magic. So uh, yeah, we kind of fell in the trap there. So uh, um, Snapcaster Helix is us, puts that down to 10. We're going to use this tribal to fetch up another land. A mountain off the top, uh, which we're going to use the Valakut trigger to kill off this uh, Snapcaster Mage. Still playing cagely. I think I was trying to get to a position where I could class the Primeval Titan, and then if that gets countered, then uh, I would be able to scape shift. Uh, all gets a bit too close, and I decide to go for the Primeval Titan here. Our opponent has Path, but um, it's certainly not the end of the world. We're going to be able to. Uh, Search up a Valakut and a Mountain and kill off the uh, Spell Queller. I oh, know we're going to search up a map with a Path, which we're going to use to kill off the Spell Queller, and then we're going to. I can't remember if we search a Double Valakut here. Yeah, we search a Double Valakut. Play out the Conley Heart Expedition and uh, the Sheltered Thicket that we've been holding. So that builds 9 to our opponent. Classic Injani Vengeance puts us down to 2, goes up to 17 with the uh, Lightning Helix ability. And here we're just going to scape shift for the win. So I think I end up sacrificing 7 lands and getting the last 6 mountains in the deck and the final Valakut, uh, which is overkill, to be quite honest. Um, I suppose technically we should have possibly left some more mountains in the deck, um, but. Uh, we are going to win here quite handily. Um, we're going to be putting the four Falakut and six lands, and so that's um, a total of uh, 24 triggers uh, for three damage apiece. Um, so, yeah, more than enough to uh, finish off our opponent. And uh, we're going to be able to wrap uh, this one up fairly handily. So yeah, all the triggers on the stack, uh, Conley Heart Expedition also going on the stack, but uh, obviously not particularly relevant now that we've run out of mountains. Um, and uh, yeah, so all those triggers are more than enough to uh, kill our opponent. Okay, so looking at the sideboard against Jeskai Control, um, and more specifically a burn version of Jeskai Control, um, I guess what we're looking at uh, is... Well, Obstinate Balos, um, his primary method of winning uh, appears to be burning us out uh, and then using Snapcasters, etc., to reuse the burn. Um, so, Obstinate Balos seems pretty good. Um, Tyler's Tracker as well, I kind of like being able to put some pressure on him. And also, that can uh, get us some card advantage that we don't otherwise have in the deck. So, I, I like bringing the Balos and the Trackers here. Um, Relic of Progenitus could possibly come in. If we wanted it to, um, I guess that's, I mean, it's oak, it's not too bad, it's uh, preventing uh, snapcasters. 
I don't know if I like it all that much though. Um, the other option is Witchbane Orb as well. Um, I don't know if we want to bring both of them in, but I think possibly one would at least would be good. Um, just that way that we can uh, prevent his burn spells, which as I say, I think will is likely to be the primary method of attack. Uh, though Jeskai Control also tends to run Geists and things like that, which uh, again, these additional creatures will be helpful uh, against. So um, so yeah, feel feel fairly happy bringing in uh, the Balafs of the Trackers, uh, and maybe a Witch Boy a Orb or two. Um, I think we cut Lightning Bolts. They don't do a whole lot in this matchup, other than kill Snapcasters, etc. Um, so I don't really love them. Um, so yeah, I think we take those out. Uh, again, I think Prismatic Open is probably the most expendable card in the deck, so we could take those out as well. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's probably all we want to do. Our combo is pretty solid. Uh, as we see it saw, our opponent doesn't seem to be high on counter magic. Uh, he might be able to bring some in from the sideboard, but I think generally um, we we're uh, in a pretty good position against this deck uh, because without counter magic, they can't do a lot against our combo. So uh, yeah, relatively happy with uh, with our uh, sideboard options here, um, and we can. Uh, bring those in uh, without too much trouble. As I say, I think taking out Lightning Bolts and probably the Prismatic Omens, uh, potentially. Um, and uh, yeah, I think leaving in Sweltering Suns, as I say, um, these Jeskai decks often run Geist of Tra Saint Traft, um, so having a way of killing that uh, seems useful. But um, I don't think we need to bring in the Anger of gods of the Gods uh, for that purpose. Um, particularly as we're going to be bringing in uh, some more creatures in, so we can uh, we can trade or uh, or block favorably in, into the Geist. So uh, yeah, let's uh, let's move on to game two. Okay, so here we have a game two. This is our opening hand. Uh, not perfect, um, but we do have the turn one search for tomorrow, which is nice. Um, so I'm happy enough with this. Put these off with a colonnade. Play the stomping ground and get search for tomorrow on the go. Drawing some witchbane all from the sideboard, which we discussed um, as a way of preventing our opponent's um, burn spells. We see here from a, with a lightning helix from our opponent. Run to a far seek, which is good. Going to be able to use that here and uh, ramp up a little bit further. I'm going to play Geist of Saint Traft. So uh, we're going to use Search for Tomorrow here. Just going to let us uh, find a mountain. And uh, I'm going to use Summer's Pact here. Not for the usual play of Primeval Titan, but to get the Obstinate Baloth. Uh, getting four life gets us uh, back up to 19, which is obviously very good, um, and it also gives us a blocker against uh, Geist. Uh, does mean we're not going to be doing a whole lot next turn, as uh, so we'll have to be paying for the Pact, but we don't actually have a whole lot on next turn anyway. Um, I think gaining the four life is going to be pretty substantial, and uh, provided he doesn't have a removal spell for the Baloth, uh, which there's a good, good chance that he's taken some of his removal out. Although there is still this prime evil titan to worry about, so but um I think this sort of plays out pretty well. And make sure we don't die to this geist. So I went tax it in, which I'm a little bit surprised at, but um bolts are obstinate bow off. And uh gets the attackers four. But we do kill off the geist here, so I feel relatively happy with that. It's a fairly even trade. Given that we gained life four life off the uh, off the Baloth. Um, as I say, not going to be able to really do anything this turn because we are uh, paying for our pact. So uh, yeah, we certainly need to some find something. I mean, we've got Valakut in hand and we've got the five mountains. So um, soon these mountains will be dealing three damage. So we're certainly not in bad shape. In place of a Dillion click. I can't remember if he clicks me or himself. Um, I don't quite remember. 
um, but uh, we are left with the witch being orb if he did see it. Um, possible he saw my hand and just wasn't interested in the witch being orb, given that he has a couple of creatures now in play. Also putting out the Valakut, so now we can start using uh, Valakut triggers here. And we draw into a search for tomorrow, so we can get two triggers here off the Valakut. First we're going to play the Mountain. Kill off the click. And uh, now we're going to try and search for tomorrow. Uh, but our opponent has an answer to that in the form of a second spell coiler. Which is a little bit frustrating, but not the end of the world. Next thing we can play another mountain, kill off the spell queller with the um, search for tomorrow underneath it. But in the meantime, we are going to go to four. Obviously, we've got the witch bane orb, which means that we can happily, you know, sit around knowing that we're not going to get lightning bolted or lightning helix to death. Um, so that is a good position to be in. We do have to be a little bit wary about this celestial collide, though, because uh, now we are at four life. So I draw into a Kali Heart expedition. Going to run out. I'm going to play this mountain to kill off, as I say, the uh, spell queller with search for tomorrow underneath it. Then cast search for tomorrow, fetching up a mountain, kill off the spell queller. I'm going to pass the turn here. Uh, unfortunately, our opponent finds his uh, sixth land and is actually able to activate the colony as I discussed. Um, and yeah, unfortunately he is able to win here. Really close, <laughs> kind of frustrating. Um, if we were able to get one more counter on this uh, expedition, we would have been able to um, sacrifice it at instant speed. So we could have killed the colonnade uh, with Valaka activations. Um, so we were just very, very slightly off. Um, and as I say, if we got to next turn, we could have uh, could have put a second Valaka into play um, and uh, felt relatively comfortable. Um, but yeah, unfortunately he uh, found his uh, last land just in time and uh, we weren't able to uh, get the expedition high enough to uh, to sack, um, which is really annoying <laughs> because I really wanted to kill it at instant speed um, and then we would have been pretty safe, I think. Um, I mean, we don't have anything in hand, but basically any any way to get a land would, uh, would have worked. Um, so, figgling uh, a little bit uh, a little bit annoyed there that we lost, but um, it was a very, very close game. Okay, here we are with game three against Chess Guy Control. Uh, so, this is our opening hand double primeval titan search for tomorrow and Tireless Dragon. Um, it's not ideal having double titan in hand, it's a little bit irritating, um, but I am going to go with this. Got three lands, which is a decent number, uh, and the ramp, and uh, we're going to be able to play Tireless Tracker on turn three with the ability to play land alongside to get the clue, which is pretty good. Uh, Punt gets a Sacred Foundry, Lightning Bolts is down to 15. Going to fetch on the end of his turn, fetch up another Stamping Ground. Search for tomorrow is going to find us a mountain. So we draw into Valakut. We play Tyler's Tracker here and then run out this Valakut so it can come into play tapped. Um, and then we get the clue token. One plays a Snapcaster for no. Uh, with no ability to flash anything back, which is kind of interesting. Guess he's going to try and beat us down as fast as possible, I guess. Um, I guess is smart. Second lap for Custer comes down for our opponent, uh, flashing back the lightning bolt uh, to kill off the trialist tracker. And gets in for two, putting me down to 12. Uh, another search for tomorrow comes off of suspend, so we're going to have six mana here. I'm going to be able to run out this primeval titan. Pretty good. So yeah. 
second Valakut and the Mountain to uh, double triggers. Uh, I decided to just kill off the Snapcasters. I suppose it's not strictly necessary, but I suppose it, uh, if our opponent had a path for the uh, for the Prime Evil Titan, then giving away an extra two damage, which uh, doesn't seem necessary. Uh, our opponent then passes a turn and concedes. Um, so, yeah, obviously didn't have an answer to Prime Evil Titan, and that basically wraps up the game there, nice and early for us. Um, even if he did have an answer, we were in pretty good shape. As I say, if he pathed the Prime Evil Titan, we could have searched up a mountain, uh, dealt six damage, and then we had a follow up Prime Evil Titan uh, with also another Valakut in hand. Um, so we could do a pretty insane amount of damage uh, the following turns. Um, so, yeah, that pretty much wrapped it up. Um, this all went pretty well. Uh, I think this matchup's really good. I think for the most part, it probably gets better after sideboarding because we can bring in obstant balloffs and things like that, which may not to uh, prevent being burnt out. And yeah, they're just like their lack of counter spell, uh, counter magic uh, really makes it very difficult for them to uh, get interact with us and uh, and beat us. Whereas our combo uh, just uh, sort of plods on. Um, so unless they can kill us particularly quickly, which isn't really the aim of their deck, um, it's going to be very difficult for them to beat us. Um, and it seems like a pretty unfavorable matchup on their end.